consultant, oh, sorry, senior technical consultant, I'm sorry. So Ms. Shalini Malhotra is working as senior technical consultant at CIT and CRT. And she is going to give you this very important information about e-books, e the types of e-books, how you can create energized textbooks, all this information you are going to get in this first session. So over to Ms. Shalini Malhotra. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Nidhi, for the introduction. Yeah. Today, as Nidhi has told, today we'll be talk in this session, we'll be talking about electronic books, different types of electronic books we use at NCRT and energized books. How do we make them energized? How do we make QR codes, etc.? So I welcome all of you for this session. And if we have any queries, we'll try to sort out all the doubts after the session. So first of all, I'll start with sharing my screen so that I can start my presentation, right? Is my screen visible, Nidhi? Can you confirm? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yeah. Thank you. So for today's session, uh, I'll start with uh, the today's life we are heading. Everything is gone digital from your shopping to your payments to your when education has become digital, it means we are doing all the things online on our electronic devices. So when we are using electronic devices, we need electronic books also. So e-books. Shalini ma'am, you are muted. Is everything fine? Yeah, um, is it okay? My voice is breaking or something? No, no, it's fine. Right it's now, fine. it's fine. Okay, yes. fine. So I was talking about e-books, electronic books. As when we do our normal physical education, we use physical books. So when we are doing digital digital world, we are doing digital education. So we need electronic books, which we can read on our electronic devices, like smartphones, tablets, your mobile phones, everywhere. So what electronic books actually are, how do we made them, we'll be discussing in this session. Electronic books are uh, non-editable digital content. Actually, Generally, also the physical books, you cannot change the content without the author's permission. Same as the electronic books. But the only difference is these are like digital. You can read it on your electronic device. You don't need a, to carry a physical book, a physical bag. Just a single electronic device, your mobile, your laptop, will ha can have all your books in the digital format. So these are some definitions of the electronic books non-editable text that is converted to digital for display and reading on electronic devices. And you cannot uh, change the content without the author's permission. So at NCRT, we are using three types of digital books. That's our PDF, flipbook, and ebook. PDF are the oldest one. They were developed in early 90s by the editor. We all are very familiar with PDFs. We use a lot of documents in PDF and we have NCRT books, eBooks in PDF formats on the NCRT website. I'll just show you in a while. PDFs actually are image based format, which is um, device specific also. Like the old PDF will probably will not open in your new device. 
and the new uh, PDF will probably will not open in your old version of the device. Then, then the upgraded version came, which is a flip book. What actually is a flip book? We'll just know. We'll just get, uh, talk about that also. What actually is does is like a physical page. When we can flip, we can flip the flip book also. That's only a physical appearance of the flip book, but there are some other differences between PDF and flip book also. That I'll uh, discuss in this slide. The important uh, is the physical appearance of the flip book. Uh, PDFs are generally uh, scrolling books, but on flip books, you can flip the pages as you do in your physical book. Plus, there's very important difference between PDF and flip book is PDFs are non auditable. Nowadays, when the new version of PDFs are audit with the Adobe software, you can. Um, you are, they are auditable also, but the previous versions, which are image based, they are not audit, auditable. That is, they, they are, the text to speech feature is not available on the PDFs, which is available on the flip book. You can use softwares like NVDA to read the text of the book. This is very important for special child, for blind people, for old people. Or we can also use it. Sometimes we don't want to read the book actually, but we can listen it. So that's an important feature in the flip book. Then one more thing, the PDFs, when you want to open them, they ask to download first, which is not with the case with the flip book. You can simply click a flip book. It will open and you can read it. Another important thing is the format version, which I uh, talked about previously also. The PDFs of the old version will not open on your new devices. And, but that's not the case with the flip book. Once a flip book made, that can be open on any device, any version, anywhere. And one more important feature is there, which I have not mentioned in this slide, that in flip books, you can have the audio and the videos also embedded in it, which is not possible in PDF. When we make a flip book, you can add an audio file also and a video file also embedded in a flip book, which is generally not possible in PDFs. Fine. So um, on uh, NCRT uh, ePartshala, we have flip books. ePartshala uh, website, we have flip books. All the books are in the flip book format. Next is EPUB. EPUB is electronic publication. Now, what are the difference between PDFs and EPUBs? The most important feature of the EPUB is that when you open a PDF on different size of devices, like if your phone is five or seven size, the PDF, you have to generally zoom it if you have that feature on your phone. But EPUB is reflowable. Reflowable text means when the size of the device changes, screen changes, it will just adjust itself. You don't have to zoom it. You don't have to change the um, it's a zoom zooming thing. It will just reflow itself. That is the main feature of the EPUB. Next important thing is, again, it's text to speech feature, which is available on EPUB. You can easily have a software on your um, device, which can read the text written on the EPUB. Another thing is uh, EPUB is actually when we convert a book to EPUB, we, it's, we actually you, it's a technical thing. We actually use XML and HTML formats and we use uh, uh, CSS, cascading style sheets to format it. You can have a beautiful ebook, which is not generally not possible in PDFs. PDFs are, if they are image based, you cannot actually decorate or you cannot actually make the different font on the same page and colors, which is which you can do it in EPUB. It's very important for image images also. When we have images on the book, you can make good images with help with EPUB because you can you, you can actually code it. Technically, you can code, you do the coding work, you can make a software thing. Okay, and next is the other two features are similar. Like um, 
EPUBs are not device specific. You can open a single same EPUB on any device on any version, which is not the case with the PDFs. Okay, in this slide, I'm trying to uh, differentiate between EPUB and PDF in their technical things. Like it's saying that the device compatibility, as I to uh, told you, that PDFs are format version for PC and tabs, but same file can, EPUB file can be used on any PC, any tablet, any mobile, iPod of any size. Content also can be automatically upgraded, but uh, PDF content cannot be automatically updated. You have to manually change the content. Then content scaling uh, automatically scales as the size of the device in case of EPUB. But PDF is fixed width and height. You have to physically zoom it or physically use the um, device to change it. Then the lay layout is flowable format with dynamic content pieces. EPUB have dynamic content pieces like uh, the uh, images and other can be dynamically changed as per the device. And, um, and fonts that that what I told you the font size and images are can be easily changed in EPUB which is not possible with PDFs. Okay, now these uh, on the NCRT official website we have PDFs, and on Diksha we have eBooks which are energized textbook. As uh, Nidhi told before, and what are energized textbooks? I'll just talk. Energized textbooks are the textbooks which have. Um, QR code, QR code uh, attached to the physical book. When your device scan it, it takes you to the digital content related to that topic, to that chapter, to that topic. That is available on Diksha. And on ePartshala portal, we have flipbooks. And on ePartshala mobile app, we have EPUB. I'll just like to show you also. See, this is our NCRT website. Under publication, we have PDFs. We have books of class 11, 1st to 11, 12th of all subjects, which are in PDF format. I hope everybody can see this, right? Yes, it is visible. So, this is on the NCRT website. Then on Diksha, this is the Diksha I've already opened. Uh, when, when we open a book on Diksha, this is the QR code, which we can see. This is on the physical book as well. The physical publication it book from NCRT also have the QR codes which you can scan from your device and it will take you to the digital content related to this chapter. Digital content means the digital book on Eparshala and Diksha, any other uh, related audio or video files, which are also related to this chapter, this content. So that file is called energized file. And on Eparshala, we have flip books. See, this is the one which I've already opened for to show. See, this is the flip book. You can flip it. You can actually flip the pages like this. Okay. And you can see the, it's better than the PDF. It having beautiful images and other things, which is not possible in 
PDFs because PDFs are image files. Okay. So now again, we'll go to our session. Okay. So next we are talking about energized books. Energized books is a feature aimed at providing access to digital content of various topics in physical textbooks. So all the NCRT textbooks are now energized textbooks. That is all the physical books have a QR code, which you can scan through your mobile phone or your digital uh, electronic device. And it will take you to the digital content attached to that topic to that chapter, to that topic, which will take you to the digital content. The digital content can be on the Diksha website or on ePartshala. The All the digital contents means the text content also, the ebooks also, and the uh, audio books also, or the video files also. Right? So how do we actually make a textbook, energized textbooks? I'll discuss that now. Uh, that will be doing with QR code. QR code is quick response code. It's a two dimension barcode, which is readable by smartphones. What actually is a QR code? It's an image, which is having image of the URL. The uh, QR code is a two dimension barcode image. Behind that barcode image is a URL. So I like, I'll just tell you how do we create that, mm. right? Um, there are a lot of QR scanners also. Um, the new latest mobile phones have the QR scanners inbuilt in them. But if you don't have it, you can also um, download it from any uh, Play Store, Google Play Store or Apple Play Store. We have ePartshala scanner also to scan the QR code of all the books, which you can download from Google Play Store. And the Google also now have an option to scan the QR code through a camera, which is very easy. You can easily go to Google and do check that how to do that. Okay. Now I'll tell you steps to generate QR code in bulk. Okay. If you want to generate a single QR code, what you have to do is you go to Google. I'll just try to show you that. Okay, you can simply go to Google. Just write generate QR code. Okay, it will show you a lot of uh, options. The first option you go You can simply go to there. You can enter your URL and it will generate a QR code. Okay. But if you want to do it for bulk, bulk uh, for from bulk, I mean, if you if you have 10 textbooks okay and you want each textbook has 10 chapters so you have 100 qr codes to be generated for each chapter generally qr code as as we do it in ncrt we do it for each chapter because we want to do it for each topic so we'll do it for each chapter so if you have 10 books and you have 10 chapters in each book approximately then you have 100 QR code. And if you go and generate each QR code by single method, by one method like this one for one URL, then it will take a lot of time. So what I'll do is I'll do it for bulk. I'll tell you how to generate QR code for bulk generation in, in just a few seconds. Okay. What actually you need is you need, for this, you need your digital content. That means 
your physical book should be converted to digital format like a pdf or flip book that digital format should be on a server so when the person scans it it should reach that server that digital page so that it will have a url right so and and another thing you need is a email account so i'll show you how we do that this is my email account from my email i'll go to drive i'll go to my drive from my drive i'll click this new and i'll go to google sheets i'll open a google sheet in the google sheet for the first column i'll write domain name domain url domain url is the you, you domain on which you have published your digital content the website name the uh, digital content of your um, physical book so you will have a domain url here then you have a code code is the code of the book of the chapter you can ask your publisher every uh, book published has a code right so that code we need here then we have a complete url complete url means the url uh, on which this digital uh, content will be available and then we have a qr code okay my screen is visible right okay for domain url i am using e patchala because our digital content is on e patchala so i am using e patchala as the domain name okay you will have to use your website's name your website's uh, address where the digital content you have kept okay this is the domain url for my website for my digital content then the qr code you will get from your publisher i am using here for example i am using the qr code 1064 ch is for chapter 01 as all the books start from first chapter so i am using 01 now for complete url i am using a um style sheet function that is con cat a2 comma b2 what actually i am doing here is i am concatenating this url with this code this is the function i am using that is the function of the style sheet when i click enter i got an error <laughs> okay i have used the wrong spelling right okay now i have got this complete url if you see this complete url it is actually this url plus this code c 1064 chapter 01 now what i have to do is i have to generate a qr code for this url this is first chapter of my book so i want to create a qr code for this for creating a qr code i am using a api of qric kit this is a this is a barcode that can scan a qr code can be scanned it is free and open technology that means anybody can use it it's a free and open technology anybody can anybody can make and use qr code using this api so i'm using this api to generate 
the QR code. Okay. See, can I just click enter? I created a QR code. I hope everybody can see it. I just increase the size. Can you see the QR code has been created for this chapter? See. Now, this is for one chapter. But if I have around uh, 10 chapters in the book, so what I'll do is I'll just click on this. I'll go here and I drag it. I'll drag it to chapter 10. See, what I'm doing is I'm just dragging it. So I get 10 chapters of the same book. See, CH1, CH2, CH3. Then I'll do the same dragging here so that I'll get a complete URL for 10 chapters. Okay. Now I have already created one QR code for the first chapter. What I'll do is I'll drag it and I'll get 10 QR codes. That means for the whole book. I hope everybody can see the QR code generated for the book. Right. So what I've done is I have generated bulk QR code for the whole book within seconds. So if you have 20 books, you can have different sheets. You can add many sheets here and you can have for all the books. Okay. So what next step is I'll just save it as a PDF file. I'll just Download it as PDF. Okay. So I'll export this. See, I've got this PDF file on my machine. Now I'll open it. If you have Adobe software, you can use to extract this image or from the Google, you can do PDF to image convert. You can use the converter and you can extract this image. And you can give this to your publisher. He'll pub just take this, embed this on the physical book. When a pers person will scan this, it will go to that digital content, which you have created for your organization or for your website. Okay. So this is the process of creating digit, uh, QR code in bulk. I hope everybody got it. We can have questions if, if, are there any questions? So all of you can write your questions in the chat box. They can ask also if they want to. Okay. So I have enabled all the participants. Now they can unmute themselves. 
Okay, one of the participant has said, uh, ma'am, can you repeat it again? What what particular uh, point do you require to get to be repeated? Please specify. If you want to um, want me to repeat the full process of QR code generation in bulk, I'll do that also. No, we have time, I think. From starting, okay. Okay, so uh, Nidhi, I think I'll I'll uh, do it again for everybody. Okay. Uh, if you can quickly do it uh, instead of uh, with details, uh, okay, if you can briefly do that. Yeah, I'll just do it again. What I said is we need a Q for generating QR code in bulk. We need our Gmail account. Okay. This is my Gmail account. From there, I went to drive from my drive. I go to new and I created a new style sheet. I'll go to style sheet. Okay. First, after going to the style sheet, I need four columns. The first column is domain URL. Domain URL means the domain, the server, the website where you have put your digital content, your digital book, the soft copy of your book. Okay. Then you have code. This code you will get from your publisher. Every book which is published have a code. So that is this code. Then we have complete URL. Complete URL means I'll just connect. I'll just add both the URLs, domain plus code, and I'll get a complete URL on which chapter, the cha where the digital content of each chapter is put. Then I'll generate a QR code using an API. Okay. For domain, I'll show you here. On the domain, I have used ePartshala domain because I have my digital content on ePartshala. I'm taking an example from, so I'm using ePartshala. You will use your organization, your school, your uh, server's name here. Then I'm using a QR code, um, the code of the book. This is just an example. You have to take it from your publisher. This is the code I have used. 1064 CH is for chapter 01, first chapter. Okay. Then I have used a, then I have used a function here. This is a function concat C. You'll write equal to, and concat is a function of the style sheet. And I've used the columns A2 because this is what I have to concat A2 plus B2. This is this code. And this will generate a complete URL. Okay. Fine. Okay. Then for QR code generation, I have used a um, API that is QR IC kit API. This is a software a API, which is free and open source. Anybody can use it. So I've used a function of this in my API, right? So what I'm doing is I'm using this API function. This is the function image because QR code is an image. And then I'm using QR IC kit API and this is the size B2 is the uh, for the add test text, which I wanted to add a text. See in this QR code, there's a text also 1064CH01. This is B2. It, it is taking it from B2. B2 is code. Jo code mein mein B2 likha tha, that text is printed here. And then it creates a QR code. Then what I did is I just folded this and I dragged it. When I drag it, I take it to uh, the chapters I want. See, if I have 30 chapters, I'll go to this. Then I, then uh, the same thing I did this, this, with this, I'll just drag it. And I'll create 28 chapters. Similarly, I'll do it for this. I'll hold it and I 
drag it. So I'll get the compute URL in one second. Similarly, I'll do it for QR code. I'll just hold it and I'll drag. Hello. See, I have just dragged it and I'll get the QR codes for 28 chapters, the whole book within, within a minute, not even a minute actually. So you have got the QR codes. Now what you have to do is you have to extract this image. The QR code is an image, which is the face of the URL. So what we do is we go to file, download it as a PDF on my machine. I'll export this and it will get on my machine. On my machine, when I get it, I'll just open the PDF. I'll just open the PDF. And I'll extract the images from the PDF. This is the image. This is the QR code. This is the QR code is an image. I'll just extract it using PDF to image converter from Google. You can do it. And if you have Adobe software, you can do it easily. You'll just extract this image and you'll give this to your publisher. He'll put it on the um, physical book where people can scan and reach the digital content. Okay. Is it fine now? We'll share the, I'll share the PPT and also the steps which I've written on the PPT for your convenience. Okay, Nidhi, any other questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. One of the participant has raised hand, uh, Mr. Kalbi. Yeah. Mr. Shubra, I think so. Yes, Mr. Shubra Das. Yeah, so, Mr. Shubra, you can unmute yourself now and ask. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is this. Suppose I'm going to prepare bulk video for my content. There is not a book, but, it, but I have 20 contents I have prepared, for example. So there will be no code. So how can I uh, insert code in that case? Are you getting me? Can you please repeat? And yeah, suppose, suppose, suppose I have created uh, some materials. Okay. For example, some edu uh, activity design. I have designed some activity for different classes. And mm -hmm. I, I want to create keyword code uh, on, or for those topics or for those worksheets there will be uh, at least 20 or 25 so I, it means i have to do bulk keyword code i have to generate bulk keyword code generate so there will be no code now for column b then you from have where be, I can get no that um, code. then then you have to put the domain url on from all of them i can put my google drive as domain url Ha, Google, the Google Drive. Drive may, listen, from Google Drive, uh, when you put something on Google Drive, you can get a link. You can click get link. Yes. So you will you will have to paste that link on the domain thing. And then yes. you will not have the code and the concatenate. That will be the only uh, thing for which you want the QR code, right? Yes. So do, you just have to paste all the links there. And then... Uh, for the QR code, you can put that image API and then drag it. Then you'll not have to drag the three columns. You'll only drag the QR code call. But you'll have to physically write the links, copy paste the links actually for the domain. For every uh, content. Right. right. Because the contents are different and they yes. are on the, on the drive also, you will get different links. So you'll have to put the, but you can gen, um, drag the QR code API. Okay, the QR code will be generated uh, by dragging, but yes. the link cannot be created by dragging. I have to right. 
to ah, just right. copy paste it. Yes. And that's the question. Thank you very much. There is one more jo query. Ma'am, please explain how to use the QR kit. I think so. I see kit. Yeah. QR IC kit is a software. It's a website. I have shown that also. You can just go type QR IC kit dot com. And they have given a lot of uh, instructions and steps to use various types of API from which you can create QR codes. I have used one of the API, but there are other things also you can read from that website. There is another question. Is book code uh, same as ISBN code? Is, does it mean ISBN uh, code, book code? But, okay, sir, give his number. But that you have to check with the publisher, I think. I'm not very sure. ISBN number is yeah. not the code sir, you know of the book. Number? I don't think so. Okay, I'm one of the participant is. has requested, uh, can you share the Google spreadsheet that you took for QR code generation? Yeah, I'll just share that. I'll share the whole PPT also and the steps yeah. also. Uh, there is another query. How did you copy the QR <coughs> from QR IC kit? The QR IC kit website has all the instructions that there is an API. I have to use. It's an open source. Anybody can use it. It's free. So I used an API from that website. I'll give you that uh, um, the whole function, the function of the image creation. I'll give you that also. I just uh, should I tell you the other question? Yeah, sure. Okay. If the content is not anywhere uploaded, then can't we link our content to QR code? <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't get. If you um, if the content have is... a soft copy of the content, if the person want to scan the physical QR code, then you need to have a soft copy of the content. You need to have the digital content related to this hard copy so that the person when scans it, they reach that there. No? So you need to have the digital content first. I'm, I'm clear or not? Dr. Rajkiran can tell that. Dr. Rajkiran had asked that question. So is this uh, answer not, clear to you? Uh, that is clear for me. But one more thing I was to ask, that is once we uh, convert the whole Excel sheet into PDF, after that, yeah. uh, can we take the screenshot of the uh, keyword image and use that also? Yes, you can use that also. Screenshot, short, no? Actually, what you have to do is we ha you have to extract that image. That image, uh, the publisher need that image only. So you okay. can do either way. I just said the simplest way to extract it from the um, Adobe or uh, PDF to image converter. Yeah, yeah. thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much for answering all the queries of um, all the participants. And yes, they have asked so many questions that uh, shows that they got uh, really interested in uh, getting their books energized in getting their content energized. So that's really good that you are interested, all the participants are interested. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Shalini ma'am, for providing us uh, this uh, very important information. Uh, this will definitely help us in uh, making our resources accessible to all the students and it will help in uh, widespread availability of the resources which we are creating. So thank you everyone for listening to this session and if any other queries you can always send through, we'll answer all of them as and when required on the email or WhatsApp group, whatever. So thank you very much for patiently listening to this. Thank you Nidhi and thank you everyone. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, now uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Monica. Dr. Monica, are you here?
till the time dr monica joins i would like to tell you that uh, yesterday dr monica at the end of the session discussed about uh, state action plan and uh, in the morning also she sent